I'm a grown man and I want to talk about my Wii. Greetings, Gemstones. It's your boy, Templeton Page Taylor. Welcome to a brand new episode of Hidden Gem. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And on today's episode, I'm going to show you guys my Nintendo Wii collection. But before I jump into that, I'm actually going to tell you guys a few facts that I found out about. Maybe you know about it, maybe you don't. If you do, that's cool. If not, maybe you're going to say, hey, today I learned and I like it. So here we go. I'm going to jump right into it. Fact number one. Did any of you guys know that the Nintendo Wii was going to be called the Nintendo Revolution? And that's because of the fact that the motion controls revolutionized gaming for Nintendo themselves? Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? You know, they were going to call it that. I knew about it following up on the Nintendo. But then they decided to change the name to the Wii, W-I-I, because the two eyes represent two people playing games together, as well as the actual controllers themselves. And that is a pretty interesting fact. At least it is to me. Fact number two, did you know that both Sony and Microsoft said no to motion controls? Yeah, both Sony themselves and Microsoft themselves were like, you know what, we don't want anything for the Xbox, we don't want anything for the PS4, we're going to stick with our controls. And it was Nintendo that said, hey, you know what, bring it on, let's see what we can do with this new technology. And it became a hit with them. So in a way, I'm kind of glad Sony and Microsoft said no because I really can't see doing motion controls. You know, I know the PlayStation had the PlayStation Eye with the uh, two uh, microphones, magic wands, whatever you want to call them. But I wasn't a big fan of that. And I think that uh, what, they, what they're doing is just fine. So yeah, both uh, two major game corporations were like, nope, we don't want motion control. And Nintendo was like, hey, we'll take it. And it worked. How cool is that, right? Also, did any of you guys know that you do not need a sensor bar for your Nintendo Wii? Just a couple of candles will work and the Wiimote will actually pick up the infrared uh, signal from those candles, just have them spread apart to a certain point, and you can actually play your games with a couple of candles instead of a Wii sensor bar. Now isn't that cool if you want to replace your sensor bar? If you got a couple of candles, you just put them in front of your TV, have that Wii remote pick up that heat, and bam, there you go. Because that's what it did. It didn't really sense anything. It picked up the infrared signal. And candles can give off the, uh, that type of signal. How cool is that? Also, did anybody else notice that the Nintendo 64 controller and the Wii nunchuck look very similar? In fact, I think they took the example of that. They're like, hey, let's get that uh, little uh, motion... Uh, and Z button from the Nintendo 64 controller, and let's make it into a nunchuck instead. How cool is that? Anybody pick up on that? I know it took me a little bit for, for, to figure this out, but uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Also, the Nintendo Wii was maybe about 67% powerful with its processor over the GameCube. It's like they put two GameCubes together, you know, and made the power for the Nintendo Wii. Also, the Nintendo Wii was supposed to be as small as two DVD players put together. It's a little bit smaller than that to look more fitting for an entertainment center as well. So that's pretty cool. And uh, let's see, those should be just a few fun facts that I wanted to share with you guys. If there's anything else you want to share with me, feel free to make a comment below. I'd appreciate that. But now let's uh, jump right into the video. Here we go. Okay guys, the first thing I want to, if you noticed in the upper right hand corner of the TV, my screen said 480p, 480p for my Nintendo Wii. And that's because I bought some component cables so that way I can get the best resolution out of my TV that I can get. And as you guys can see here, my Nintendo Wii is modded. I've done everything I can to mod it. Interesting thing about my Wii being modded is the fact that it took me 
well over three years to properly get this thing 100% modded the way I'd like to have it modded. And what I mean by that is when I first set it up, I did follow some dank, not so good, so dank might be the wrong word. I followed a poorly made video to mod the wheat. Now it got my meat, my wheat modded, yes. And all of this stuff that's on the screen was not there because every time I'd go to the homebrew channel, it would keep glitching on me. So now I've gone through websites, YouTube videos, searched up everything I could, and got everything to work, and that's why I've got the channels on there and everything else. It's funny, there's Netflix, there's Hulu Plus on there, and it no longer is available, but I still just like the fact that they're on there, so that's why I don't get rid of them. But today's video is going to be about my Wii collection, and I'm going to show you those right now. So we're going to go to the, uh, everyone does USB loader. I like the CFG, USB loader CFG, mainly because of a few things, and I'll show you why that is. It's got a nice somber sounding music to it when you first start it up. And then I really like the way the menu looks. And these are my Wii games. Starting from the beginning, you see we have the Amazing Spider-Man, Anubis 2. Anubis 2 is actually a, a very uh, short uh, game that uh, actually a friend of mine had, but he gave me a copy of. Now, like I told you guys before, I had all of these physical copies and ended up having them digitally downloaded and copied onto a friend's uh, system when I didn't know very much about uh, this stuff because I ended up losing everything. I became homeless, but he did end up being nice enough to follow this stuff on a few flash drives, actually. And what I ended up doing was I ended up getting a larger flash drive, put all the games on an old laptop, ended up putting all those games onto the new flash drive and then my old laptop ended up crashing on me. I'm glad I was able to do that right away. Uh, again, we have Anubis 2. We have Arc Rise Fantasia. Interesting voice acting. It's different. I am to be honest, I kind of like it because it's so different. It's not the best voice acting, that's why I like it. But fun gameplay, really good stuff. Uh, reminds me of uh, Wild Arms when it comes to the actions. You put everyone's actions in all at once and then you end up watching it all play out. It's pretty cool. We've got a boy and his blob, Epic Mickey, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. I used to have this one on the GameCube, but now I have it on the Wii. We've got Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. This one's the Crystal Bear. One didn't get a whole lot of uh, love back in the day. Uh, Final Fantasy Chocobo Dungeons. A game that I personally had, only got through so much of it, um, cause I just, I wasn't really into playing it, but it's just a Final Fantasy game to have. Got Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Now if you actually think about it, this is the 10th, 10th Fire Emblem game that has actually been put out. And it is a very rare game to get, very expensive game to try to find now apparently. We have Fragile Dreams, Farewell Ruins of the Moon. This is a game I didn't have. This is a game that my friend had, and it's been years. I want to say his name was Tony Anthony, one of the two, you know? So if you are out there and you do find my videos, Anthony, and you watch them, thanks for doing this for me. Apparently, this is a game where there's not a whole lot of enemies, just kind of like go around and search and everything else, but he enjoyed it. He beat it. He said that the story is what really got to him. Very sad emotional story. So I was willing to uh, take that just for the story alone. We have Just Dance 15, um, a game I never had, but again, a game that I liked having. I, I wanted to have because of the fact that uh, uh, I could play it, you know, with friends, family, and everything else. Uh, Kirby Epic Yarn. 
Uh, this is a game that's pretty popular in this house, you know, people like playing this game, you know, so uh, it's really great in this game that you don't have, you never die, you know, you don't die at all. So it's a really fun game to play, you can, game you can collect things, you know, little diamonds, jewels, and you can actually make a build a house in the game, it's pretty awesome. We've got Kirby's Dreamland, you know, you can't have a Kirby's Epic Yarn without Kirby's Dreamland. Not really a big... Kirby fan can see why people are Kirby fans, but I do like playing the Kirby games, you know. So this one's fun. I've tried it out. It's really awesome. Again, one that I didn't own. Uh, Klonoa is a game that I did own. I beat it. I enjoyed it. It was very fun. Um, originally, I had it on the PS One, and then they uh, I got the one for the Nintendo Wii and. Again, enjoyed it more, loved the updated graphics, uh, it was a very enjoyable game, you know. Another platformer, Marble Mania. Now, I loved playing this one just because of how challenging the puzzles were. And it reminded me a lot of uh, Marble Madness on the original Nintendo way back when. If any of you guys remember Marble Madness, uh, that was a big old puzzle type of game where you were a marble and you had to go around. This was kind of the same way, except what is the, the marble moves around and you use the controller to move the environment around, which is really neat, you know, it's kind of like a monkey ball in a way. You know, the monkey goes and you use the controller to move the environment. We've got Last Story. Last Story is one of the few RPGs that is on this system that I got and a lot of people didn't know about it. It's got a really awesome story, really interesting, yet fun gameplay and battle mechanics that I enjoyed, but I know a lot of people did not like them at all. And then of course our very popular Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, the one that has to use motion controls. Now when I had this game, it was a game that was uh, given to me, but I wasn't told that I needed motion controls, so I ended up wondering why the game wouldn't load up and everything else, and realizing, oh, I have to get the motion control plus, which I do have, and it's funny because everything on the Wii is white and the one I caught is black, you know, so the contrast, but it works, hey, you know, it still works, and I'll have to use it sometimes on a certain game when I get up to it, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what game that is. We've got uh, London Taxi Rush Hour, it's a very interesting game, uh, game you only got to use the uh, Wiimote for, not the Wiimote and the Nunchucks, and, no, no, you actually you have to use the Wiimote and the Nunchucks for this one, if I remember. And it's very difficult to drive around with this one to be able to get it, uh, get it going, get it, you know. But it was something interesting, you know, something new, something different, you know. I know a lot of people are more of the hardcore gamers and things like that, but I like to have different games, something different uh, to play. You know, not the best of graphics, not the greatest of gameplay, but you know, something interesting to play nonetheless. Oops. We're gonna go to a. Lost in Shadow. Lost in Shadow is a great game, fun game to play. I had this one, and with Lost in Shadow, you basically have to go around because you're a shadow who lost his boy, lost his person. Not like how Peter Pan's shadow, you know, ran away from him in uh, in the movie. And you see all of these things, all of these things uh, in the foreground but you're a shadow, so you can only run around on stuff in the background, on these shadows. So you gotta figure out puzzles and move things and switches, and you have a little uh, light, kind of like kind of like Navi in a way, and you gotta go around and you gotta move switches, you have to lower bridges, you have to raise platforms, so that way your shadow, you as a character, as a shadow, can get through all these puzzles and it's a really neat concept, really fun. You gotta climb all the way to the top of this tower to find your boy, your person, you know, get attached to him again. It's pretty neat. We have Mad World, one of the few M-rated games on, uh, on the Nintendo Wii. It's very cartoon uh, style graphics, uh, uh, but it's a beat-em-up, you know, you go around and you can uh, kill people with chainsaws and beat them up and smash their heads and the only color you really see is the color of the blood, uh, which is red, obviously. But the rest of it's uh, like white and black. It's almost like an artist who had done um, like the sketches, but they hadn't uh, inked their their work yet or 
anything else. And it's very much like that. Uh, fun, fun game to play. Fun, fun game to play. Interesting ending, but uh, really great game. Uh, Action-wise, it looks neat. It's got some interesting mechanics to it. Uh, I really love it. Definitely enjoy it. Recommend it if you can find it. Of course, we got Mario Party 9, and you know you can't have a Nintendo Wii without any Mario games, you know. And Mario Party 9 is one of my favorite Mario Party games of all time. You know, six, seven, eight weren't that bad, but I really enjoyed nine. Played this with a few friends, you know. Uh, memories uh, can come back. I can go on and on, but uh, I want to get through this list. So here we go. Metroid Prime Trilogy. All three Metroid games. Come on, guys. You know I gotta have the Metroid games. I'm much of a Metroid fan as I am. Uh, the only thing that I really don't like is how difficult it is to control the arm cannon in this and the screen. Because I'm used to playing Metroid Prime 1 and 2 on the GameCube. And I never really played the third one a little bit because I didn't like how the motion control worked. Uh, but I heard it was a really fun game, so I'll try to get to it. So here are all three Metroid games in one lovely little package here. And then, of course, Metroid Other M. Now, I know a lot of people didn't like the story on this one, and I'll, I'll admit, the story is a little off compared to other Metroid games. There really isn't much of a story. You kind of play through the game, and playing through the game is the story. Finding out about Krang, and, or uh, Krang from Ninja Turtles. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, you got Ripley, Mother Brain, you know, and everyone else, but like playing through the game and finding out different areas, that's basically finding out about the story. And this one, the story with her like growing up and it's afterwards and everything else is interesting, especially that one particular enemy you gotta fight over and over again. And they do make her a little bit of a softie in this game, I'm not gonna lie. So, you know, what would have been cool about this game is if they did more backstory about her family. Again, I'm old school, so I used to get Nintendo Power, and apparently, uh, Samus has a brother. And not a whole lot of people will remember that uh, with all this stuff. But yeah, and they're claiming that in the new Metro Prime 4, that possibly the bounty hunter after her, uh, after Metro Prime 3, I guess, when you beat the game, is her actual brother. Now, that would be very cool if they did something like that, you know what I mean? You know, maybe they do a little more backstory about her parents and what happened, you know, and more about her childhood as growing up with the Chozo. That would have been pretty neat, you know, just a little bit more backstory. Got Muramasa, the Spirit Blade, I believe that's what it's called, um, but Miramasa, uh, a uh, awesome hidden gem for the Nintendo Wii, not a whole lot of people know about this game. You actually play as two different characters, it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up action game um, about, uh, uh, I believe it's ancient Japanese or Chinese history, which is really, really cool. It's very fun, it looks, it looks awesome. It's one of those games where you can just keep uh, mashing the attack button and get like hundreds, you know, uh, 300 uh, hit combos and things like that. But there's a lot of certain enemies that you have to be able to uh, know how to how to attack them. It's not just uh, bam, 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 keep hitting the button and you're done. You have to learn how to uh, get people to get rid of certain shields and block certain attacks before you can actually attack them or use their attacks against them. It's really awesome. Uh, everything is in, I believe, Japanese voice acting wise, but the story is in English. You can read it all, and it's really awesome. Mushroom Men, uh, The Spore Wars. It's a pretty good action uh, uh, game. You literally go around as men who are made of mushrooms and spores and everything else, and you go around and you beat people up and everything else, beat up other mushrooms, other types of spores. It's a really cool, fun game uh, that. Uh, I haven't really gotten too much into. Uh, again, this is one of the ones I didn't have, it was given to me. So, um, but from what I've seen, it's pretty awesome. We've got Trixie's Toyland, another one's very similar to Anubis 2, where the control schemes are the same. It's more for, uh, not for mature audiences with it being E, uh, but you know, it's still an interesting, fun game. You know, short game, it's only about like four or five levels. Of course, we have. Super Mario Bros. Wii, the new Super Mario Bros. Wii, you know, you can't, I didn't play the original one, but I played this one, beat it, very fun game, I enjoyed playing this very much, 
Ninja Bread Man, same thing as Trixie over here. Uh, it's basically just a, co a copy of, uh, of Trixie's Toyland and Anubis. You know, got a few, very few levels. Games smash are the same. Pandora's Tower, never played this one, didn't have this one. One of them's given to me again. And basically it's about a guy who's trying to rescue his love, who apparently is dying from some disease, and she ate uh, some kind of parasite, and is turning into the parasite. Uh, the more and more you go up this so-called tower, and you get her these fiends, these basically monsters she has to eat. Phantom Brave, another one I never had was given to me. Uh, very fun game. I've been told never got to it when it was given to me, so I can't really say much about this one. Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2. You know, you gotta love the Pikmin games because these games are fun games where you do a lot of gathering and stuff like that. And the way you have to use the Pikmin and how you need so many Pikmin to get certain parts. And the first one, you gotta basically revive your ship. The second one, I'm not quite sure what the story arc is. Well, of course, Rayman Origins. Origins, you can't uh, go wrong with any kind of Rayman games. This one's more of the side scrolling one, like it was on the phone, but the phone. Uh, version is constantly running. This one you're not constantly running in this game. Uh, Sharon the Wanderer, a very another interesting, fun hidden gem that not a whole lot of people know about. It's more of a dungeon crawler type of game with great RPG and uh, action oriented aspects and a really interesting story. Um, I want to get more into this one, but I uh, again I've got a lot of these games. I don't I haven't played a lot of them and beat them, you know. Um, Spectra of Origins, one I never played whatsoever, one that was given to me actually uh, by some other friend, but I just never jumped into it. And the main reason why is because I heard that like certain parts, you really have to work on like using some kind of drill to get certain things out of it. Gameplay is supposed to be fun, but the whole drilling thing, I was like, I'm not quite sure, but I'll take it anyways. Someone gave it to me for a pretty long time ago. And of course we have Spider-Man Edge of Time, a big Spider-Man fan, you know. This one you actually jump, you, this is the one I believe with Madam Web, where you have to actually uh, go through uh, and change a lot of things that happen with the history of Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, and, or maybe, uh, I know with this one, you play as four different Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2099, maybe Spider-Man, Spider-Man Noir, which is like in the 1920s, and I can't remember the last Spider-Man that you play as. Uh, that's like the Spider-Man with the symbiote suit, so to speak. Uh, very fun game because you get to play tip, uh, four different Spider-Man, four different mechanics of the way they all play. They all play differently, and, but it's super fun. Um, then we have Spider-Man, Web of Shadows. Maybe this is the one with Madam Web, Web of Shadows. Uh, Edge of Time, I believe, okay, Edge of Time has Spider-Man 2099 and the regular Spider-Man. Uh, Web of Shadows is the one that has actually Madam Web, and you have to go uh, to uh, talk. You, you speak with Madam Web a lot, going through the game and trying to change things and everything else. Spyborg, a very fun platform, uh, two-player beat 'em up game that I had years ago. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you stories about this one. Um, but you literally choose between four different characters, three or four different characters. I believe it's three. And yeah, you just go through all these things. You can use all these weapons in the environment, beat up the enemies, do all these crazy, insane combos. Um, it's almost to me like a Blastoid, a Blasto on steroids in a way, with the way the gameplay is. It's got some silly voice acting and everything else, but it's so much, so much fun. Uh, well, again, we have Star Wars The Force Unleashed. We've got uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, if you guys have played those games. You know, where you play as Star Killer, it was uh, Vader's uh, apprentice. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert if you didn't know that, I apologize. But yeah, he's basically Vader's apprentice. And then in uh, the second one, again, spoiler alert if you haven't played him, you find out that he's actually a clone. It's pretty crazy. Um, Super Mario Galaxy 2, I played this one. I never have Super Mario Galaxy. I'm sorry, Super Mario Galaxy, not Super Mario Galaxy 2. Play this one. I liked it. I liked how the whole dynamic was going around the world, and it was in space, and they did the whole gravity thing, you know, and the way you like flew, transferring from planet to planet, and everything else, and all the stars you collect, and they help you out. is really fun. We've got Tatsunoko versus Capcom, which is an awesome fighting game, but a very difficult one to play at the same time. 
Um, I haven't played this one in forever, so I know it is one of those ones you can actually switch these characters out and beat them up. But there's a bunch of people. You've got Ryu, you've got Batsu from, um, oh geez, uh, Rival Schools. You've got uh, so many different characters in this game. It's crazy, but it's a fun game to play. We've got Xenoblade Chronicles. You know, you got to have Xenoblade Chronicles. You know, this is the one game in Japan that they were never going to send out to us. But due to fans, fans pushing on this game, hey, give us Xenoblade Chronicles. And they finally released it to us. I believe this game came out in 2011. Um, uh, but the fact that it did come out, great gameplay, awesome story, so many twists and turns. Um, a voice cast of nothing but people who are from the UK, which is crazy crazy cool, fun game mechanics. It's like an MMO uh, type of game. Uh, definitely recommend this one. It's so fun. You can do like social type links with certain characters, certain townspeople. It's great, and it's uh, you know they can get they, they can get you like different abilities, and you know oh it's there's so much to talk about this game. You, know, like, you can go easily 127 hours doing all the side quests, and, uh, and then you finally be. It's just uh, uh, I'm getting tongue tied on how crazy fun this game is. And finally, we have Zack and Wiki, which is a game that I did have. I played it. I beat it. Interesting story and game mechanics. It was more of a funny little game. And I definitely like little games. It's different. It was a different game for me to play. You know, I really got into it. I love Wiki. The little guy over here, Wiki. I loved his uh, quims and humor and everything else. It was so, so cool. Um, definitely, definitely recommend getting this game. If you do have a Nintendo Wii, try to get a hard copy. I believe they're not very expensive online right now. But again, I don't have any more hard copies, so this is a uh, this is my lineup, and I think it's really really awesome. Now, one thing I also want to show you guys are things in the menu that make me feel like I have physical copies, and I'm gonna click on some games right now. On I love the imaging that they have right here, and what's really cool is that. You can go back. You can see a 2D image of just the front of the of the front of it. You know the 3D has it stand out. It has an image of the actual disc, which is very very cool. And then you got the full uh, actual one turning around and giving you an image of the back of the case shows you what control is wrong. I mean, it's the spitting image of the full case of what it would look like. Uh, that's supposed to be a high quality image of it. And I can't really tell too much. You guys may be able to. And then you have the RGB uh, cover. Again, I love the fact that it turns around completely and it does this. This thing is also cool right here. You got start, you got cover, you got info, you got manage, you got options. If you click on the info, it tells you, okay, the game came out in 2010 by Ignition Entertainment. Uh, it's rated T15, it's one player. It requires, a, uh, you can use the Wiimote, the Nunchuck, Classic Controller, and the GameCube Controller. This thing is compatible with GameCube Controller. And it gives you the full explanation of every single game, up to two pages worth of all of the information which I believe is probably more than what the case is actually going to tell you. And I think that is very awesome. And then you can go back and you can choose other games. Um, we got, uh, again, Chocobo Dungeon with the Final Fantasy music in the background. That's what I like how it has got to play some music. You got the disc. I love how the disc looks like a puzzle. You got, and it'll just randomly spin. Like it's technically spinning in the background, and when you click the full, it'll just spin completely around. And as you saw, it was started on the side that you actually open it up. And again, it's got the back, the 10, all the images, the high quality, the RGB. Go to the information. You know, tells you the year. Um, it's not compatible with the GameCube controller. 
and the whole explanation. Some of these explanations actually can be two, uh, three or four pages long. It is really crazy cool. Um, oh, let's go down here. Is it here? Uh, let's go back with this one. Okay, the style. I love how this thing works, mainly because of the fact that you've got it on the grid right now. I believe it's on flow, okay? You can go to a grid. You can, when you go back. Yeah, this is the grid, so. You can go to flow. There we go. And when you go to flow, see the grid doesn't. I think this is what flow is. It's moving it left and right, if I remember. But you've got flow Z, which again, this one has. It turns it, you know, like a Z type of thing, which is really cool. You know? So you've got certain ways you want to try to find your games. We've got Cover Flow 3D, and you can move them over like that, which is so cool, you know? And it's got all these options and ways that you can do this stuff. Now, every time you reset your Wii, um, this particular thing does not save, and that is a bit of a bummer. It'd be nice to be able to turn it on and actually save these options. We've got the 2D cover flow. We're moving over, it just it moves the games up like that, which is really cool. So you can see good images of the uh, of what they look like. Another one is uh, the front row, which this is the one that I personally like. Um, I love how they can move like that, and you can see the games. That are coming up you know and see the games that have passed and it's got the reflective mirror on the bottom that is really awesome we've got vertical which when you go back it shows everything vertically going up you know it's, it's like that I, this is one i really don't like personally because there's so much space over here but it's cool to be able to go through the games and uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's called the Demon Blade. I feel silly for mispronouncing it when the name is up top here, you know? So, I said Spirit Blade, but it's Demon Blade. And then, of course, you have the old school carousel, like it is on the actual, uh, if you go to the USB loader, and you can move the games around like that. Which, see this? This looks really cool. I like the way it's got the whole carousel, and it basically has the games in alphabetical order, you know, F. J, K, M, L. This one I think is, uh, no, it isn't in alphabetical order, never mind. Thought it was in alphabetical order, but nope, it's not. Oh well, that was my mistake. And see, what I think is really like when I go to the front row, probably, yeah, like, if you go to grid, you can do like, different ways of doing rows. Three, four, and you know, you got all of your games on on there. And now uh, I see, I, I'd rather actually see them. I don't really like this uh, number four, but if we did like number three, you know, you've got that grid. If we did number two, you know, you've got that grid, you know, um, hmm, I wonder how you get through the board. That's weird. Maybe. Well, let's go back. And I think flow is the same way. You can do that with the grid. One, two, three, the rows. One, two, three, four. But again, see what I like about this is that you can also, like, uh, let's go to vertical. Or carousel you can switch to the back and yeah then it'll show all the games back so you can read all the information if you want to see everything that there is that's really cool now it does cover up top of here but when you move over you know, 
I love how it flips it around, you know, and seeing the backs of a lot of these games is really awesome, you know, just the back of them. It is super sensitive though. But like I said, me personally, I'd go with the front. I like the front row because I love the way that goes. And then down here, you can do like gray matter. You can do console only. You can do uh, the CFG 3D. Uh, you can do stripes. Let me go back and see we've got the stripes for the background. And we've got the mirror going on still. And then again, you just go to style. You can go to uh, circles. Go back, go back. So you got the circles in the background, you barely, probably barely see them, you know, but there's that. And then again, you just go to that, you can go to, I honestly like the stripes and I like the gray matter. So we go back, back. I think that looks really cool myself, personally. Um, and I just love how you can go through all these menus and everything else, but enough of uh, explaining, so let's jump into some gameplay. So let's do, um, let's try some, uh, let's try a boy in his block. And we'll hit start. Okay, there we go. There we go. We got a clear image, and we'll just hit uh, I guess we'll do a new game. And you can play as two different characters. You got the guy or the girl, you know, and um, why not? We'll try and lose those. Uh, and then you get to choose two different opening acts, and I guess we'll try uh, the first one here. Oh, I guess I'm playing. No, we don't gotta go through the tutorial due to time and everything else. I'm so glad I finally cleared up though. So I guess I chose, uh, I guess Muso is right here, Muso the Chicken Bun. You collect these soul, which are scattered along the main road. You can gradually replenish your blade's soul power if you discover any souls. Be sure to collect them. What I love is how uh, there's an actual double jump, and then you can just kind of like drift down to the bottom. But look at how pretty this game looks, you know? I mean, uh, I, my phones probably can't do it justice at all, but you know. But it's so much fun, and then we're gonna try to get to some gameplay soon. Even the running, you can hear the footsteps. It's and you attack with A, and you've got some down attacks that you can do, and just see how the uh, the combos just keep rising. And it is really just a, a hack and slash type of game. And you can jump up, and you can you know, most of your combos have to be on the ground. You can uh, change out your blade. I never knew that. I've never had a blade break on me and uh, played it before, so that's pretty interesting. That's probably because I collected a bunch of souls before, so. 
and then you can collect treasure. Also, when you see a small basket displayed on your map, this indicates the treasure is located nearby. Go and find it. See, I like that there's an automatic treasure finder on the map. And there's multiple paths that you can take. You've got multiple ways you can choose from. There's your map, and right now there's no treasure on the map. But let's jump up. Let's go this direction and see how it kind of like changes it up on the map. Like, oh, you went to the top now. And it always gives you some kind of rating after every battle, which is cool. And so, you know, you got Countryside, you got a Scarecrow. Uh, my little one would probably say that's Turnip Head from Howl's Moving Castle. That's a popular movie in my house right now. So, I love how they got the countryside. You can go inside, you can examine things, get treasures. That's really awesome. And we'll get through this fight here, whether I win or lose, and then we'll shut it down. I'm going to try to win. That blade, did you see that blade? That was a pretty awesome design blade. And uh, so there you go. So we got a couple of games there that uh, I uh, wanted to show off a little bit of gameplay there just so you guys can see. Um, again, you know, I mean, just really quick on my menu, of course, we got. Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, and these don't, these three no longer work anymore uh, with um, with the Wii. So, you know, but I just have them on there because I like having them on there. I don't want to get rid of them. You now we've got uh, Nintendo, got Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance. It's really awesome to play Game Boy handheld games on the, on the big screen. Nintendo 64. We've got some GameCube games under Nintendo. Um, the My Menu, which is how I have uh, um, the Samus here, and it's, it's the more fall that's moving around. My homebrew channel, my USB loader, the ships on the side, I'll move over. If there's anything that there isn't a channel for, it's got these images of Samus here. And you go over, and you know, it's all, it's all Samus. I love how this one is her actual uh, Zero Suit image. And then if we go to things like the menu, that's a full picture of Samus and her armor. That is really, really cool. We've got great message. We've got the calendar, which, you know, doesn't look any different. One that's really cool is there's one that's like Ninja Turtles and actually flips over. I haven't gotten that one yet. But then when you go into like the actual Wii options, you got data manager with uh, a picture of Samus in her suit and then Samus without her helmet, which is really, really awesome as well. That is really a cool thing that you can do with the Wii. And again, like I said, it took me personally three years to get all of this up and going. Like, I didn't have any of this stuff here. 
none of these channel images whatsoever. It took me forever because going into the homebrew took a lot of time to get configured. And the only thing I have on here, but I don't really do it anymore because I have a PlayStation Classic, is I believe I have, yeah, this is a Nintendo uh, DS uh, emulator and it doesn't really work very well for me. Uh, it's super slow. Um, again, I've got uh, Genesis, which I don't have an image of, and I have the uh, Wii SX, which is uh, playing PlayStation games on the Wii. You can put them on the SD card, but it's like one, two games at the most, maybe, and I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, you see that I have a Wi-Fi connection down here. Um, All the loaders and everything outside they try to configure and all that other stuff and we'll just exit to the system but uh there you go like i said those are here are all of my wii games i have about 47 of them all together on this it doesn't tell you a number, unfortunately, but, you know, it basically breaks it up by pages, and you have two, four, six, eight, eight per page, and I've got five pages, so, and the last page only has seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so, eight times four is thirty-two, I have less than that. Uh, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Okay, so I have 39, not 49, so I miscounted. I'm sorry about that, guys. But there are the games in my list for my Nintendo Wii. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing some of them. Enjoyed that little bit of a uh, gameplay that, uh, that I put out there. Uh, Boy in the Bob is, is a very, very fun game. Uh, that Muramasa, the Demon Blade, is an interesting, awesome uh, side scrolling uh, button masher with a really cool story. And there you go, that is my Wii collection in a nutshell. Now, I'm going to be right back because I'm going to show you one more little thing, not too crazy or big. <coughs> But uh, these are my only two physical copy games that I have right now. I have Zelda Twilight Princess and I have the Star Wars Complete Saga. These are the only physical copy games that I've got. The only ones that I had basically found in my stuff when I got kicked out. So I've been holding on to these for many, many years. And... The rest of them are all on screen, as you guys can see right there. So, thank you again for watching me go through my list of games that I have for my Nintendo Wii. And I'll see you guys back on the chair. Alright, well, there you have it. That's my Nintendo Wii in a nutshell. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my game collection, as well as those few little facts that I said at the beginning of the video. Um, I always love sharing this stuff with you guys, letting you know what I have. Because like I've said before, you know, my collection is my own. It's not like everyone else's. I don't have a game room or anything really huge like that. I have everything digitally. Not everything digitally, but most things digitally, you know, because I'm a guy who likes to do stuff like that. I'm a digital guy. So, Again, if you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell to see my latest videos, and as always, Gemstones, do me a favor and stay shiny for me.